Welcome to the homework for lesson 10. This is module 3 of grade 3. Get your name here first, please, as usual. We're labeling an array and then filling in the blanks to make the statements true. So you know we're working when we're working with labeled arrays like this, and some are shaded and some aren't, we're using the distributive property and filling in the blanks. So here we're trying to work on 8 times 7, which is one of the last one of the harder ones, sevens and eights are both numbers that are tend to be learned last in the multiplication table. And seven times eight is, is two of them, like six times seven. That's usually one of the last ones to get memorized. So eight sevens is the same as seven eights. That's what this says up here. And the whole thing is going to equal, we'll find out. So if we're looking at seven eights, then we could be looking at seven fives and seven threes because this whole thing this whole thing is one two three four five six seven rows of eight if we chop this up into a little bit of a friendly piece here five rows of seven we can count those by fives to get 35 pretty easily and then we have seven threes and you might know that one if you know your threes, or you can think of three sevens and add three sevens together. It's 21. And then you just can just add those two parts together. You can probably do that in your head. So here's the rest of it down here. Starting with the 8 times 7 equals 7 times 8. That's what we're doing right here. There's the 8 times 7. And this is 7 times, and this is supposed to be adding up to the 8. So that has to be a 3, because 5 plus 3 makes it 8. And now we have 7 times 5, which is the shaded in array, plus the 7 times 3, which is the, the white section of the array above. That's the 35 right here. Here's the 21. Add the 35 and the 21 and you get 56. <clears throat> now we're break up it's break apart and distribute to solve 72 divided by 8. Now this is I'm going to explain this once cuz this is hard. Um and not everybody wants to see this explanation a lot of times. So I'm going to give it once and if you want to see it more, make a comment at the end of the video if you can. Or, uh, you know, send me an email. Or if you see me in school, tell me you want to see this more. Uh, and it's using division, using number bonds to make division easier. And this is not something that comes easy to a lot of third graders. So if you want to think of a missing factor problem, Right, 72 divided by 8. Division is usually hard to think of, but it's easier for third graders usually to think of it as a missing factor problem. 8 times what equals 72? So here's what we got. We've got the 72 here, and we have the 8. And we're trying to figure out what this missing factor is. So it's like trying to figure out how many 8s. How many 8s do we need to make 72? Right, because it's the same as saying, you know, how many 8s equals 72. Well, we know if we have 72, right? We can chop this up into 8s that are easy for us to, to, that we might already know that might be easy to manage. The easiest, the second easiest 8, the easiest one is 80, and that's too big, so we can't use it. So 40 is another one. That's 5 8s, right? Because we know it, so we know, we don't know what that division result is. But we know this is a 5, right? And then 32 divided by 8, so that, that's what we have left. Because we know this is a 32 because it's 72 minus 40, right? We're looking at the 72 and the, the 40 we picked because it was going to be easy to work with. Because we know 40 divided by 8. And then the 32 is, is what's left. And so we can figure out what's 8 times what is 32. And that's 8 times 4. So if this is a 5, and this is a 4, then this has to be a 9. 
and that's how you do it. And now that the first like the first dozen times you try to use this, it's it's not going to be that easy. But it may there are some of there are some third graders who will see this and they'll be, oh my god, that makes it it makes a lot of division problems a lot easier because now you know how to use like if you know a few division quotients like this if you know a few of them like that then you can use them to figure out bigger ones just like you do with multiplication you use the ones that you know to figure out the ones you don't well this is how the whole thing works out in an equation there's a lot of punctuation here and a lot of division symbols but stay with me here. So the 72 divided by 8. And I'm going to switch colors around just to make this a little bit easier to, the connections easier to see. This is the 72 divided by 8. So it equals 40 divided by 8, which is this one here, plus, and let's see, I need to pick another color. I'll use red here. This is the 30 plus the 32 divided by 8. So this has to be the 32. And remember, we get that 32. We chose the 40. Remember how we did this? We chose the 40 because we know it's going to be 40 divided by 8 is 5. The 32 we figured out because 72 minus 40 is 32. Because this is a number bond. These parts have to add up. So, and it's, this is like the backwards distributive property. So we know that's 32. So we know that the 40 divided by 8, we know that's 5. That's why we chose it. And the 32 divided by 8, we figured out that one is 4. So we have, there's the 5 plus 4, and that's 9. Just as we had there. I hope that helps. Here's the next page. Count by 8. Then match each multiplication problem with its value. So we're just counting by 8. So that's 8, 16. And if you're doing repeated addition to figure out the next 8 still, that's fine. 8, 16, 24. Right? And then... Think of the next 8 as a 6 and a 2, so then you have 30 and then 2 more, right? Because that 6 and 4 makes the next 10, so that's 32. And then you've got 8 and a 2 makes a 10, so that gets you to 40. And then adding 8 to 40 is really easy, that's 48. And then think of 8 as a 2 and a 6, because the 2 makes 10 with the 8, that gets you to 50. And then the 6 makes 50 and 6, 56. And then we need 4 more again. For this 6 to be a 60, so eight. think of 8 as two fours. So it's going to be 60 and 4 more, 64. And then we've got 8, right? Now we, have, we, now we need 8 to be a 6 and a 2. So that makes it, that gets, the 6 gets it to 70. And then the other, the rest of the 2, the rest of it, the 2 makes it 72. And then 8 plus 2 is a whole other 10. So that's, then we're all the way to 80 now. And that's how you do it. repeated addition. That's the way to think of breaking up eights to move on to skip count and kind of speed it up. That's just an example of how you might do it in your head. And so nine eights, right? You know this is going to be ten eights, right? And this is nine eights. So here's nine eights. And we're just, we're mag we're just matching the products here. Nine eights. There's five eights. And this is a lot easier, of course, if you already know your eights. And seven eighths there. And now we're dividing. 16 divided by 8. How many eighths does it take to make 16? It's two eighths. 40 is five eighths. And once you have them all written, they have all the eights written down like you do at the top of the page now, you can just count. 32 is how many eighths? It's four eighths. Just like that. That's all it is for division. How many eights makes 48? It takes six eights. And 56, that's seven. And 72, that's nine. 